is Alfonso Ambrazon, and in today's session on monitoring and diagnostics, we're going to take a close look at the Intellex BMT 300. So what is an Intellex BMT 300? It's an online system that continuously monitors the condition of bushings. We look at the capacitance and power factor of each individual bushing, with the additional functionality of being able to monitor any partial discharge in the main tank. The system comes with several sensors. The main sensors are the bushing sensors, or the bushing adapters, that mount themselves directly to the bushing tapping point of each bushing to allow us to make the measurements. The capacitance measurements, the power factor measurements, and the partial discharge measurements. We also have internal sensors to the system, one of them being the GPS, that, that date stamps all our measurements and synchronizes all our measurements. We have also a built-in humidity and ambient temperature sensor that looks at the ambient temperature and the ambient humidity. And then we have two external sensors, one being a temperature sensor and the other being a high frequency neutral sensor. Both of these sensors, I will describe the functionality later on. And of course, the perception desktop that allows you to do all the diagnostics of the system. Bushing data. The most important part of the Intellex BMT 300 system is being able to get the bushing data and the correct bushing data. Every bushing or every transformer bushing out in the market today comes with a nameplate. This nameplate is critical. This nameplate holds the manufacturer of the, of the bushing, the serial number, the make and model of the bushing. It also holds electrical parameters. As you can see on this example right now, it gives you the voltage of the bushing, it gives you the frequency of the bushing, and it gives you the critical uh, C1 capacitance and 10 delta offline measurements. And these are all measurements that are done at 10 kV or 20 degrees Celsius. The nameplate or offline bushing information is, is critical to the system because the system uses this offline data as its, as its starting point to do its measurements. So as you see here on the display, we have offline 10 delta values, so there's a value for A, B, and C, and we have offline capacitance value A, B, and C. Once the system, once these offline data are put into the system, the system automatically calculates the starting point. So for example, the calculated bushing leakage current for A, B, and C is calculated based on the C1 capacitance value. And the calculated phase angle between A and B and A, C is calculated based on the tan delta values of A, B, and C. So once these offline numbers are put into the system, the system now has a starting point. The next critical information, and this information is actually uh, required way before the system is actually manufactured, is the mechanical connection point. Every bushing has a different mechanical connection point. Each bushing has a different uh, thread size of that mechanical tapping point. Um, we have seen so many varieties that it's almost impossible uh, to, to have one bushing sensor for, for every bushing that is out in the market today. And this is why this information is required prior to us even building the bushing sensors. Here's an example of when good dimensions are received ahead of time versus bad dimensions that are received. So on the left hand side you clearly see that the information that we received at the factory and the sensor that we designed to meet this bushing does not fit at all. So the biggest problem we have here is that there's a flange. Now if the drawing does not tell us that there's a flange here and you just give us the starting point where the tapping point is, this is the kind of problems that we will run into. On the other hand, on the right side, on the right side is a perfect example of 
of being able to get the right dimensions, whether it be not only on the tapping point, but also on the flange and everything around the tapping point. So good, bad information leads us to bad connection points. Good information always leads us to making a good connection. Now, what happens is that if, if, if the sensor does not fit, like on, the, on this example shown here on the left-hand side, the unit cannot be installed, meaning the unit cannot even be commissioned, and what happens is everything has to be stopped. And the, 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 the bushing tapping point needs to be reclosed with its original tapping point. So at, at, at a point where, where the sensor does not fit, everything needs to stop. The electrical parameters are important in us to be able to design the sensor and be able for the system to know where the starting point is. But the mechanical uh, adaptation is utmost important because we need to maintain the integrity between the center pin of the tapping point all the way back to the electronic enclosure. And the way to do that is to be able to have a full bulletproof connection and integrity from the, the center pin of that tapping point all the way back to the electronic enclosure. System measurement. In order for the system to make good measurements, we assume that all the bushings are, in, are part of the same three-phase system, uh, that all the bushings are pretty much identical. Uh, there's not one that's very different than another. Um, and, that, and that they're all in the same or very similar uh, phase angles because at the end of the day, we are, we are comparing uh, one bushing to another when we make our measurements. We're measuring the individual um, uh, bushings, but to determine which one is changing with respect to the other, the other two, all three bushings um, are, are compared to one another. So installation, here's a, a look at the installation. So we, we see the bushing sensors that are mounted at the bushing tapping points, um, and they can be either um, a three-phase um, system where we have uh, bushing sensors on the uh, on the primary or high voltage side and we have bushings on the secondary or on the low low voltage side so our, our system can uh, look at three bushings or it can look at at six bushings meaning the high and low side we then have um, uh, one temperature sensor where we look at uh, the top oil, uh, this temperature sensor is mounted at the upper portion of the main tank and its specific functionality is to look at top oil and uh, I'll talk a little bit about that a little further on. And also we have what we call a high frequency CT which it gets wrapped around uh, the, the ground bus bar that goes from the neutral bushing all the way down to the ground. And the Intellexant uh, BM3300, uh, there's a GPS that's inside along with an ambient sensor and humidity sensor that are mounted underneath the box. So it's a very simple installation. There's really nothing to it. Uh, again, what's very critical is all the uh, mechanical and electrical parameters around the, um, the bushing itself. Internally, um, all the connections come into the box. Um, here's um, the internal side of the box. So on the on the main, you have here at the bottom. We see the the shorting block. So this is where all the bushing sensors, the coaxial cables of the bushing sensors, come come 
come to be connected. So you have the all designated being high side and then low side and the connection for the high frequency neutral CT. The top oil uh, or temperature sensor gets connected here as well. This is a CAN bus connection. We have the antenna for the GPS and then of course up here in a corner uh, we have all the contact relays and inside the door uh, we have different type of communication op options along with uh, the, the power or the breaker for the power. So how, how does the system acquire data? Um, uh, we have three blocks here. The gray block is represented by the bushing itself and here is the tapping point or what we call C1 connection. Uh, the sensor is represented here by the green box and this is what the sensor looks like. And the, the sensor itself has uh, two redundant resistors. Uh, the resistors are sized up to be able to measure the correct leakage current coming from the bushing and also has two redundant gas tubes um, in the event of uh, any electrical surges, uh, these gas tubes will close and short, short to ground to alleviate um, any voltage going back to the main, main electronic unit. So the sensor, once the sensor is fitted onto the, um, to the bushing tapping point, um, the signal is fed down to the box on a coaxial cable, and once the signal comes into the coaxial cable, that signal is separated into two. Uh, one goes through a low frequency circuit where we look at the capacitance and power factor or the condition of the bushing and the other uh, side of the signal goes to, through a high frequency where we're looking at um, any partial discharge activity. So we're looking at a capacitance change of C1. So we're measuring, we have a sensor that's mounted on each of the bushings, each tapping point of the bushing at C1 um, and from this C1 uh, nameplate value we, we calculate what the leakage current should be. So our system, the Intellex BMT300 measures the leakage current based on uh, this C1 value. So the system continuously looks at the leakage current and if there's a change in leakage current from its original nameplate value, then we represent that change in a change of C1, percent change C1. So we do not display uh, the actual C1. For example, C1 on the nameplate on the example said 471 picofarads. What we do is we take the leakage current that represent, represented by that 471 picofarads which is a starting point, and any change in the leakage current is then recalculated back into a capac capacitance change. So here is a, uh, uh, an example of a trending of a C1. So here is the um, current A, B, and C, and as you can see, uh, the, 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 they trend pretty much all the same. <coughs> so, I, so as you can see, uh, all three bushing leakage currents are very similar uh, because the, the, bu the bushings are relatively similar in capacitance um, and you see the, the small variation and this variation is due to uh, temperature fluctuation and load fluctuation. So that, that criteria that we use uh, to be able to determine um, if the bushing is good is we say that if the change from the original nameplate value um, is within 5%, we say that's an acceptable bushing. If the change, uh, the delta change in capacitance um, is anywhere between 5 to 10%, then we, we give you the first level alarm telling you that something has changed. Please pay closer attention to it. You may want to do an offline test to confirm. And if the change is greater than 10%, then we, we believe this is a serious condition in the bushing, a uh, second level alarm will trigger and th this is where we, we believe that the transformer should be shut down and a very closer look at the bushing should be taken uh, look, a, look, a look at. A more serious look at the bushing should be taken a look at if the second level of alarm is triggered.
When we look at power factor, our system is monitoring the relative power factor of each bushing. Um, so here again, um, we, we, we know uh, we're measuring the leakage current. Uh, we know uh, with our GPS um, when the currents, each individual current crosses that zero point, um, and each one of the currents is uh, out of phase, 120 degrees out of phase. So we know exactly when they cross that zero point. And here what we're looking at, uh, we're looking uh, phase angle change between uh, A and B and A and C. Um, again, we're looking at that angle deviation from its original starting point. So from its original starting point, the 10 delta values, uh, we know uh, uh, where A and B should be res res respect to 120 degrees and we know where A and C should be with respect to 240 degrees or negative 120 degrees. And from there we calculate the phase angle the difference between the three bushings. So here's, a, here's an example of a relative phase angle trend chart. Um, again, um, in this example, uh, we would have a starting point um, and then from that starting point, again, you, you'll see the deviation. Now, you may look and see and say, wow, this is a humongous uh, uh, change of va va variation, but this is typically normal what happens uh, due to temperature effect and due to load effect on, on the bushings. And if you look very closely at the scale, uh, the changes are very, are very small. Uh, Doble says that a one degree change in bushing is catastrophic. Uh, here, if you look at this, we're looking at changes that are less than uh, 0.1 or 0.2 degrees. So uh, it doesn't take much. Uh, from, from, point, from zero to one degree is not much, so the slightest change in phase angle will cause a very big change in power factor, a very big change in tan delta um, very quickly. Uh, here's another example um, I have a phase angle uh, again here uh, a little bit more steady uh, so th this tends to, to indicate that uh, the temperature or voltage variation load variation is not affecting this uh, bushing as much as the previous one and again you see uh, with respect to the angle uh, the scale of the angle here the deviation is very very small but again it does not take uh, a very big change in phase angle to make a very big sus substantial change um, in tan delta or power factor. So again here our cri criteria uh, is we say that if the tan delta um, change is within 150 percent from the nameplate then we determine this as being an acceptable bushing um, a change anywhere between 150 and 200. We raise the first level alarm, um, and this is something serious that the customer needs to pay a little bit more close attention to. And if the change is greater than 200% from the normal nominal nameplate value, then this is a the second level alarm comes on, and this is a serious condition, serious change, um, and customers should shut down a transformer and take a really close look at, at the bushing. So again, we're looking at a change over time. So here's just a, um, a relationship uh, of what I've been saying. Um, I said that Doble says that a one degree shift means catastrophic um, and the, the, the transformer should be shut down because that bushing will eventually fail. Um, here's, here's a, a um, example how our system looks at it. So here's the nameplate value for example and if our if as we're measuring the angle change and you see the angle change uh, doesn't doesn't take much okay doesn't take much okay the actual measurement if we're actually showing a measurement uh, would this would be the value and this corresponds to uh, for example, if we take the first one here, if there's been a change of 0.1 degree, uh, that would represent a change from 0.2 to 0.56, which represents a 100% change. And so 
anything above 150 percent we have our first alarm limit so you see that a slight 0.2 percent uh, a slight uh, sorry a slight uh, 0.281 degree change we're already in that zone of a first level alarm and we get into the second zone of of alarm level when we're less than half a degree change from normal uh, original nameplate. Okay, so that's how quickly an angle shift, okay, can render a bushing uh, uh, to be to be doomed going into uh, failure mode. Now. What plays an influence on bushing measurement, uh, specifically on the on the tan delta or the power factor measurement, is is temperature, and and it's not easy to go measure the temperature of the bushing. Um, so, what we do is uh, this is where our temperature sensor comes into play. Um, all our system comes with a magnetically mounted uh, temperature sensor. This is an RTD. Uh, that magnetically mounts to the tank and we position this RTD at the upper portion of the tank and, and we look at this as being the top oil temperature or the reference temperature of the bushing because most of the bushing there's most of the bushing is external but because a portion of the bushing is also internal to the main tank we use that top oil measurement of oil as being the reference of the temperature of the bushing and our system has two algorithms. Um, these are the temperature compensation curves for an oil impregnated bushing, a condenser bushing, and a resin impregnated condenser bushing. And these are uh, the temperature compensation curves our system uh, looks at. And the temperature sensor, the temperature we measure, we correct back uh, to this curve to be able uh, to get the more accurate uh, power factor measurement. So, it, so here's a, a typical uh, trend curve um, um, where we're looking at a power factor change uh, of A, B, and C, um, and 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 also monitoring the top oil. So you you see every time you see the influence that uh, the temperature has on the behavior of the bushings. And in this particular example, uh, like I said, a, B a bushing is the reference bushing because it's the bushing that's more closely to its, its point, the zero point. And then we, re we, we monitor that change between A and B and A and C. And here and here's where uh, you see the, the change of uh, bushing B, B changing and bushing C changing more than the bushing A. So this is how the trend chart is represented using our perception desktop. Without this, it would be impossible to see how the bushing is behaving unless you're, you're taking the Modbus points and going back to a SCADA system and the SCADA system can do its own trending. Polar charts, or I like to call them polar plots. Um, we use the polar charts and, and the polar plots, plots sorry, to, to, uh, um, um, to give you a better indication of which bushing is actually causing uh, or changing with respect to the other two. Um, the polar charts are the vector sum of the three, therefore, um, if all three uh, bushings are uh, being influenced at the same time by the same effect, uh, they will be negated. That effect will be negated and nothing will be plotted. However, if there's a change that's not being seen by the other two, but only seen on one, then the polar, polar charts will, 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 show that, will show that change. So here's um, what the polar chart looks like from the viewpoint of the perception software. You will see that the polar charts are color coded. Uh, this is not, um, and the color code um, is where the alarms are generated. So we do not generate the alarms from the trend graphs. 
because the trend graphs are influenced by temperature and load. We generate the, the alarms uh, from the polar charts because the polar charts negate everything that's similar to all three. So uh, please do not take this as a, as a dartboard. It is a true representation of the, of the system using the perception des desktop. So everything in the green is, in this particular example, is deemed to be normal. Uh, this particular example, the alarm customer decided to set the alarm at 0.5, uh, the first alarm at 0.5 and the second alarm at 2% 2, 2 change. So uh, the first alarm will be triggered once it goes into this yellow zone and the second alarm will get triggered once it gets into this red zone. Now, th th this is a customer who's actually using very tight um, alarm points. Um, as I said, when it comes to C1, we, we look at 5% and 10% as being our two alarm points, but those are user adjustable and customers can adjust them to whatever they want. And it's the same for the power factor. We alarm on the polar charts, and again, we alarm at 150% change and at 200%. And again here, if the customer feels that's too tight, um, he can make them larger, or if he feels they're too high, he can make them, he can make them tighter. And again, here's a representation again of a polar chart uh, looking at the capacitance change. So in this particular case, um, everything is green within 0 to 5% uh, because that's the alarm limit. So everything under here is deemed normal. And in this particular case, you see that, that bushing A is changing um, a little bit more than bushing C and B. Uh, and the darkness uh, of, the, of the actual polar plots is just the, the, the time stamp and the activity. Uh, so the darker um, that 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 it's the darker the area, the the more the more recent it is. The further the blue, the further away um, it's, it it has it, it, it has been. And again, you can zoom in and out of these um, um, charts. Uh, you can also here with the icon, you can flip back to the trend charts and have a look at the trend charts if you want. Uh, you can trend the current. You can do all sorts of things with the perception software. Again, here is another indication of, uh, of a polar chart. Partial discharge, or PD. Uh, PD... Um, is something uh, that occurs uh, due to a breakdown in either solid or uh, the electrical insulation, uh, whether it be solid or, or uh, fluid, um, and, and partial discharge. Um, usually when it occurs, it, it gradually increases exponentially. It doesn't just disappear. Um, and so being able to monitor is critical, and there's different ways of monitoring uh, partial discharge. Um, and again, the partial discharge um, uh, directly attacks the, the insulation, whether it be uh, the oil or whether it be the solid in, in, insulation. So um, again, um, when the solid insulation is affected, and the solid insulation we're talking about the paper and a transformer, uh, when its dielectrical strength is weakened, um, um, it will start to produce dissolved gases. Uh, you'll start to see an increase in humidity uh, in the oil. Um, and then you'll start to see crackling. Uh, you could, and then the, you'll start to see the short circuits can occur, the partial discharge, and, and that eventually will bring uh, uh, the end of the transformer, the life of the transformer. Uh, to a screeching halt. Okay, this is why it's, it is important to, to monitor partial discharge. And if you're monitoring partial discharge and you have an online DGA system, a multi-gas DGA system, then you're able to correlate any change in partial discharge uh, and look at any change in, um, in, in, in gases, spe specifically the hydrogen gas. Now, there, there's different ways of measuring partial discharge. We can go to the very basic uh, to the very expensive um, way of looking at it. Um, our system, the Intellect's BMT300, 
looks at an electrical signal. So it, it is a more um, uh, simplified version of PD. Uh, we don't use any additional external sensors. We use the same bushing sensor where we measure uh, the leakage current uh, and do the capacitance and power factor measurement. Uh, from there we pick up any electrical discharge uh, that could be occurring either in the bushing itself or in the transformer main tank. Now, if the bushing has partial discharge activity in it, um, technically by that time um, we'll already have seen a big, big change in power factor. You've already been alerted by the system that the power factor has changed drastically and you should have been already been able to, to, uh, to address it because when you start having partial discharge in the bushing, it usually means that it's going to have a catastrophic failure uh, very shortly. Um, so our system cannot tell you where it's coming from, and, and that's the way we discriminate between uh, being bushing and not main tank, it is hopefully any activity in the bushing will result in, a, in a, an extremely uh, aggressive change in, a, in the phase angle and power factor. So our system is looking at an electrical signal, a signal uh, in a range of 0.1 to 3 megahertz, and that's what we zone in on. And the system also shows uh, different uh, parameters. We look at the total amount of, uh, of partial discharge events in a cycle, whether it be a 50 hertz or a 60 hertz cycle. Uh, we look at the apparent charge of those cycles. Uh, because we're measuring leakage current, we know what the voltage is, we can calculate an apparent charge in picocoulombs. And then we also calculate the PDI, which is the total power of all of these events. And this is calculated based on IEC 60270. And again, this is a calculation and, it, and it's brought out into a, into a milliwatt number. So, so here's, a, here's a typical uh, trend chart. Uh, from our perception software uh, where you can see uh, the customer's alarm limits. Again, uh, the, we don't have any default alarm limits, so what we, what we say to customers is uh, let the system operate for a week or two, and then you'll have an idea if there's uh, any activity, and then from there you can set your alarms um, adequately. So in this specific, in this specific example, uh, you see PD activity uh, being generated in uh, in the B phase, which is uh, the blue uh, the blue spikes, versus uh, any activity uh, that's done in the um, in the other two phases. Again, here um, the polar plots, um, the vector sum that we calculate uh, will give you a really better idea uh, versus the the uh, trend chart. So up here, on, on, there is an icon you can go flip back and forth from the trend chart to the polar chart. Um, when you flip to the polar chart, the polar chart really gives you a, a really good visual indication of, um, of where the PD activity is actually coming from. So, so when you're looking at the polar charts for capacitance and power factor, you're actually looking at uh, bushing A, bushing B, bushing C. Uh, when you're looking at partial discharge, here we're actually looking at partial discharge in phase A, phase B, or phase C. Now, um, partial discharge is influenced by external things. Um, so with our system, we, we try to mis minimize external influences on the PD measurement that we're making as best as possible. And we have three, me three methods that we do that with. The first method that we use, as I just shown you, is the polar plots, because the polar plots will not show anything that behaves similarly to all three phases. So we'll, we'll be able to identify which phase it's actually coming from. Uh, we can correlate humidity. So we do have, with our perception software, you can correlate any PD activity with the total PDI power. Um, with humidity, and there you can see how the trend is behaving with respect to humidity. And then the last um, method that, that we have implemented in our system is we call the pulse polarity 
discrimination method, and this is where the high frequency uh, uh, neutral CT comes into play. It's a high frequency uh, current CT that's clamped across the neutral bus bar, um, and from there we're able to look at pulses that are generated uh, through that neutral ground. Uh, so anything, anything vicinity around the transformer will get picked up. So here is the high frequency neutral CT, current CT. Here's um, how it's mounted. Uh, so again, it's, on, it's coming from a neutral bushing all the way to ground, and it's uh, easily clamp, clamp onto the, to a bar or to a, uh, or to a rod uh, that goes down to ground. So any, the pulses generated um, um, externally um, will see opposite effect in our system, opposite polarity effect. Anything generated internally, you'll see, um, uh, um, sorry. Um, okay, so, so here's how the polarity discrimination work works. If, if um, the signals that are going through the bushing sensors and the neutral CT are in the same polarity, we de determine this is to be an external event and so nothing gets recorded. If the pulses are going in the opposite direction, uh, we assume this is being an internal event and it gets recorded by the system. So here, here's a um, how we look at it uh, when we're looking at um, it through a scope. So um, here are the, the, all the signals coming from the three bushings and the signals coming from the neutral. So what we have, we, we'll always have some sort of noise at the beginning part. Um, and what the system does is it, it filters out this noise. So if, if, if the first pulse is six sigma greater, then the noise, then it'll, it will cycle in and, and zoom in to that point. So anything below, any noise below six sigma, okay, will not get registered. So the first pulse greater than six sigma of the total noise will get registered. So it, it, it zooms in on the first pulse, okay, and the greatest pulse and compares that pulse to the pulse that's coming from the neutral CT. Because in the opposite direction, this is an event that's occurred internally and it gets registered by a system. The system then waits 45 nanoseconds and then looks at the next pulse and, and so on and so forth. And this is a continuous, continuous buffer. So if you look at it, this is how it looks like uh, when you're looking at it uh, quickly. So it is something that's that's being done uh, very quickly uh, by the processor. Now, when we look at it externally, again, the same thing here, the, the system zo zooms in on the greatest spike. The spike needs to be six sigma, six sigma greater than the noise. Uh, it will lock into that signal and then compare that signal to the signal that's coming from the neutral CT. Again here, we do have a a spike here on the blue in the opposite direction, but the system will focus on the largest spike, and in this particular one is the purple one, and then it compares, and it, because it's, it's in the same direction, same polarity, this is an event that's come externally, and that's represented uh, in this similar fashion. So again, the microprocessor is processing very quickly, and because it's generated uh, externally, the pulse will, will come in the same direction, both through the bushing adapter and the neutral CT.
Ordering models and communication. So when we talk about ordering a BMT 300 system, like I said at the very beginning, the system comes with an electronic unit. Um, it comes with the sensors, the temperature and ambient, ambient temperature sensor and the humidity sensor mounted underneath the enclosure. It comes with the neutral high frequency CT and a temperature sensor to be able to monitor top oil temperature for temperature compensation. And it comes with the, the desktop software. And you need to have at least three bushing sensors. Uh, so at the minimum, you need to be looking at three, at three bushings. And if you want to look at all six, meaning the high and the low, then you have to add in a, a, third, a second set of sensors. Plus, we have to add in the boards to be able to measure the low side. And then, depending on how much cable you, 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 you require, uh, we, can, we can add in the, the extra cable. We do have options. We have a mounting stand, and we have some uh, communication options. And then we can also upgrade from our desktop software to our perception fleet software. So communications, the standard protocol right now as we speak today in the system is a Modbus protocol and we are working on DMP3 and IC 61850. Um, one is due to come out in Q3 of this year and the other one is due to come out later on in the year 2015. Uh, right now the standard R uh, Modbus protocol is over serial 485. So if you don't ask for any communication option, it'll come standard RS45 port Modbus. The other option we have is we use a uh, multi-net to be able to do multi-master and allow us to go um, to go to different masters. Okay, so um, so I'm s skipping ahead here. So those are the, um, the options. So we have what we call an integrated solution. Uh, we would like to sell uh, our Bushy monitor system with every Kelman multi-gas. Uh, they make a great combination uh, where we're looking at the dissolved gases inside the main tank, looking at the Bushy monitor, and looking at the PD. We can do a lot of correlation. So uh, we can put the two together make an integrated solution to have a more comprehensive monitoring package. And again here, um, we, can, we can take the signal from the Intellex, bring it into an Ethernet switch, or, uh, an ML, uh, GE ML600 switch, uh, bring the, 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 the transfix into the switch, and then with the perception desktop or fleet, you can access both, both systems. The other option we have, um, is, is if you're not using a transfix and you want to use the BMT as a standalone uh, and you want to be able to use the perception software along with being able to go to SCADA, uh, we have the, we have, we built, we have a multi-net solution where we mount a multi-net inside the door and either through fiber or through um, copper connection, you can go um, uh, back to SCADA, multiple SCADA and software at the same time. Applications, um, we have single phase application. Uh, you can use our system. Uh, it is meant to go on three phase application transformers, but we can also do um, uh, single phase application. We can do a single phase application where there's a spare. We would just throw in um, a switch box to allow you to switch over to the spare without interrupting the system. So this is a an application, a project that we've worked on. Um, here's another project that we work, work, that we worked on. Again, here, uh, different banks, um, three separate banks, a single banks using the same the same spare transformer. So here we would put two BMTs, one for one bank, one for another bank. Uh, two separate boxes, depending on which bank would require a spare sensor, you, you would just switch over without, without altering, um, um, interrupting the system. And then, of course, we also ha have applications uh, where we can monitor 10 bushings on a transformer uh, where we would have uh, 
three high voltage bushings and six low voltage bushings plus to neutral. In that particular case, uh, we would use one BMT system to look at the high voltage bushings, and we would use one BMT to look at the uh, low side bushings. And the neutral CT would get connected to the monitor that has the high voltage bushings because the partial discharge is only monitored on the high side of the transformer. So we do not look at the partial discharge on the low side, only on the high side. So as we come to the conclusion of this presentation, the takeaways that I would like you to remember is that the BMT-300 is a continuous monitoring system that looks at the condition of the bushings. We look at the capacitance change and power factor over time for each individual bushing. And we also have the added functionality of being able to pick up any partial discharge activity in the main tank. And if you incorporate it with our multi-gas system or any one of our other online systems, uh, we have a more comprehensive system uh, using the perception desktop and the fleet ranking system, then you can, you can really observe and have a, a, a great solution from one sole supplier, uh, not requiring any third party, uh, all the instruments coming from GE, uh, service, commissioning, uh, um, after sales service, and so on. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. So thank you very much for listening. It's been a pleasure. If there's any questions uh, that come up, uh, in the, in the coming days, don't hesitate. Contact me, contact us, and it will be a pleasure to, uh, re to respond to you. Thank you very much.